Hey there, and welcome to the Overcomers Overcoming Podcast. It is great to have you join us. This podcast series features those who have gained victory over a life encounter. With that life experience, we encourage those who are experiencing something that might seem to be insurmountable. We advance and encourage others by passing forward evaluated life experiences. We have three objectives in this podcast series. We want to encourage those who are engaged in any type of life encounter by offering to walk with you to help you gain victory over anything that might seem impossible. We want to share our experience to help you. Our second objective is to help you develop a confident resolve that there are multiple options to get past any life obstacle. It's a matter of thinking into the situation. Our third objective is to help you with critical thinking skills. If you are facing a dilemma resulting from a previous decision you wish you could reverse, we want to help you think into all of the facts and factors involved in making an informed decision. I'm Ron Cooper, founder of The Cooper Culture. I'm with my wife and business manager, Marty. Together, we are The Cooper Culture Company, who is sponsoring this podcast series. Today, we feature Lynn Hapner for a second episode. Lynn describes to us in just a little bit more detail some of the things she and her husband David experienced in the past. It's a great story of reconciliation. This is a testimony of nearly 25 years of gathering the courage and processing things of the past to a very positive experience. Marty and I want to applaud Lynn for having the courage to be able to express her past in not excruciating detail, but to pass forward what the Lord is doing in her and David's life. It is a great testimony to listen to. Marty, what are some takeaways we can gain from Lynn and Dave through Lynn's testimony? Ron, I'm proud of Lynn and how she opened up even more about her story. And the fact that once she started being in devotions with the Lord, realizing he is her help and not focusing on other people for acceptance and reliance on their approval and how God has just helped her come closer to him and be able to accept people for who they are. It's a great story of courage and learning to accept yourself knowing how the Lord is working in and through us. Marty, it's a great story. Let's listen and learn together. Lynn, welcome back. Good to have you with us. Our first episode with you, you discussed somewhat of an overview type fashion, some things of the past, and um, maybe today we could talk about trust, forgiveness. It somewhat goes together, I think that you had discussed a little bit of your past, and we're not interested in dwelling on that, but rather some life experiences to carry forward. Things that are important to us in the church to be compliant with, and we're all ambassadors with Christ, those who are saved, and so we want to replicate what he wants us to do in his life. And so for us to replicate Christ, to be an ambassador for Christ, It's a matter of us accepting each other. I think it's us not gossiping about. It is a matter of us living with each other in in the context of sin. Yes, we all have. Let's accept each other. Let's work with each other. And let's move on today and forward. Lynn, our listeners are going to be very interested in whatever level of life experience you would like to discuss to pass on because there are a lot of our listeners who are experiencing what you have and what you are experiencing. Lynn, welcome back. Thank you. It's nice to be back. Lynn, you had mentioned uh, a little bit of, well, trust in who can I trust? There are times some of us put more trust in people because, well, I hope people like me. I hope people will accept me. And sometimes we maybe put too much trust in or too much reliance on other people to the exclusion of, does God accept me? God tells us he has an unconditional love for us. Unconditional. That's a pretty wide sweeping term. It's difficult for us to 
model that unconditional love at times for other people because, and then fill in the blank with whatever. But Lynn, can you talk to us about whatever experience you have, thoughts you have about this topic of trust and maybe transitioning from, if it was a part of your life, transitioning from wanting other people's acceptance to, now I need to put more reliance on God. Sure. I have to kind of go back to the reason that I no longer trusted the church, I guess. I had uh, made a few errors. My husband and I, we've been married for like 36 years now, but we are military. Being military, it's it's tough. It's tough on the family. I think it's tough uh, on married couples, um, especially my husband decided to go more into flying for our administrations. So that put a little bit of stress and, and, and things on our relationship. One thing led to another and we were, we split. We decided that we were going to get a divorce. We, we left. Actually, I decided that I wanted a divorce. I should not say he did not want this at all. So um, I filed for divorce. And in the meantime, I ended up meeting somebody. And through the course, I just did not feel that 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 fell apart. That that didn't work. Nothing was working. <laughs> so I decided to uh, we decided to reconcile. And when we reconciled, I found out that I was pregnant with this other man's child. My husband wanted to still stay together, and we were going to raise this baby together. But I knew I needed some counseling, and I needed some help. So the church that he attended. I decided, we decided to go to the pastor and sit down and have some counseling with this pastor. This pastor was not a good counselor for marriages or for our situation at all. The very first session, he just, he told me that he thought David should divorce me, that he shouldn't put up with this. There was a few more things and I just got up and I left and that was it. I'd had enough, had enough of the church. I had enough everything. I did not return for 15 years. And and I just kind of, I just went down this path of just partying. It just was not me. After that, after I got tired of that, and I finally decided that I was going to, you know, go back to church and start living the life that I, I knew that I should live. I went back to church only to find the same problems with church was still there. So basically, I had to make some changes in my life. It wasn't everybody else. It was me. And I think that was a wake-up call for me. (laughs) You have a wow life experience. What I discern from what you said, Lynn, is that there was a a lot of dissatisfaction in your life. You went a little bit different route, and you found your own way of try to finding happiness and found out, well, that didn't work out. And so you and your husband, Dave, decided to reconcile. That could be, that is huge right there. I mean, he could have said, boy, you give up on me at any time and I'm done with you and let's just part our ways. But here's a huge story of reconciliation that you two came back together and you acknowledge you're you're pregnant with a child yes. uh, other than your husband's. And it, wow. And so, Lynn, even as you retell this story, I can just envision that this may be a very, very private story. You want to be very careful with whom you even share this because deeply personal and I don't know if you'll use it against me. And that, that involves trust. Absolutely. So, Lynn, th- talk to us a little bit of it. I mean, there's, there's probably days of hours of story of how did you, I guess, get to accept yourself maybe and what happened and be able to trust other people that there's some you can, some you can't. Dave trusted you because he wanted you back. He was willing to reconcile, can I use the word, in spite of. And you're now at a point where you've had this life experience, and I'm going to use the term, you want to pass it on to other people because, yep, if you had the opportunity to relive life, you may make a difference soon. You probably would. But, hey, it, the past is what it is. So now you're you're moving forward and you're passing forward your life experience, your learning 
to others. And I'm betting, Lynn, or listeners, you're saying, oh my goodness, I'm living a part of this right now, maybe slightly different, but I don't know who to trust. I too am relying on a lot of other people. So how did you transition from that, Lynn? Well, my husband was a great part of that. If he didn't trust me and believe that and and have, have the trust of the Lord, this would never have been able to happen. We, uh, you know, it, it, we just decided that I, we had three other children together that we had together. And so having to explain to them, that was extremely difficult. We just, we just had to move forward. We just had to just trust each other. And, and the biggest thing is, is that we had decided that we weren't going to hide it. We weren't going to lie about it. We weren't going to, it, it, we were going to be out there with it because I just think all of, it, it would have been too much on me. It would have been too much on my children if we were having to, you know, you know uh, hide things. So we were very honest from the very get-go in this thing. It's kind of hard because I'm trying to figure out what to say on this. And I wasn't going to church, so I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, uh, I didn't have the Lord to, to I, I still relied on him, though. I still went and I, I cried out to him so much because it was so painful and I just couldn't believe that I was in this position, you know, in this situation. And I had friends who said they understood and friends that said that they would, you know, that they, that they, they were behind me. And then in time they would just leave and gossip and turn things into things that were just, it, it was just awful. And and I had a, we had a child that we were raising. We had, she needed to be able to have a great start in this. I did not want her to have to feel less than because of how she came into this world. That was my biggest fear. That was what really scared me the most. And I didn't, uh, I know that my older children, some of them lost friends because of all this. People just did not understand and, and, and I, I, I lost my own, my own family. My own family turned against me. I made comments to my husband that he was ignorant, stupid. Why'd you take her back? This is my family. And they, and they said these, they, I did not have their support at all. But I had the support of my husband and he was bound and determined to support me. And we were going to raise her and, and, um, and we did. And we, and like I said, we had a lot of reliance on the Lord, a lot of prayers and a lot of, a lot of crying, a lot of heartache, but we, we managed, she's, she's 23 years old now. She's, she's great. She's, she's lived a very happy, normal life. And I never realized how good it, at that time it was going to be. And God took something that was, that could have potentially been absolutely awful and turned it into something absolutely wonderful and such a blessing. And uh, we're so grateful for that. Lynn, as you're so expressive with this, uh, again, I'm going to behalf our listeners, I want to thank you for expressing a very heartfelt uh, vulnerability that this is very helpful, very useful. I can imagine that at one point in your experience, you were hoping that you could have perhaps an inner circle of friends who were right there with you, you knew, no doubt that you're there with me, you'll walk with me, you'll help me through this. Maybe as, as I'm discerning what you're saying, as it turns out, David was the only person, your husband, who stayed with you. Correct. You had family members who separated friends and so forth, who left you in the lurch, so to speak. David is the one who said, now, I am just envisioning the possibility that David could have, and I'm not suggesting these are even his values, but you may have had friends who said, abort, abort, abort oh, this I child. Did. You don't, you don't want to have the remembrance of this. The best way to get over this is you abort right now and you don't have to just get rid of this thing. You don't have to have this thing on your mind for the nine months and then life after a constant reminder of 
you know, the past. Did you experience things like that? I did. My mother, even after I decided that we decided abortion is absolutely not an option, I would have never even considered it. My mother told me that she wanted me to, us to put her up for adoption. She didn't even want her to be raised in, in, in our family. And that was so absurd. It caused so much. It just, it caused so much heartache and... So yes, I did. I had, I did come up against that. The interesting thing that I should say, I did have friends. I did have a friend group that did circle around me for a time. They weren't Christians. I didn't have any Christian friends because they, so my so-called Christian friends, they all left. They all left my side. They all, they abandoned me. It was my secular friends who stood by me but were taking me, weren't helping me, and I, they were. I was going down the wrong path. They were going down a wrong path, and I was following right with them. So I was spiraling down. Yes, they supported me. You know, yes, they supported me in that in that avenue, and they did not judge me. I have to say that they did not judge me for what had had happened, which I find so interesting that they are the ones that didn't judge me, but my Christian friends did. And that, that was what really turned me off. I'm, uh, I'm intrigued with what you're saying, Lynn. Friendship, fellowship, another term. Fellowship in the context of what Christ is saying is a kindred relationship. We're joined at the heart. We sometimes use the term joined at the hip. But when we're joined at the heart through a kindred relationship, it's a matter of us saying, Lynn, I can empathize with you. I'm not going to hold it against you. I genuinely, honestly won't. And you'll know if I do or not. You, you know from our conversation. You'll know by the expression of my face. You'll, you'll know. You know what a kindred relationship is. I mean, it's, it's a feeling, if you will. But we know whether you are totally with me or is this just, yeah, you're with me for this moment of time, but then I don't know what's going to happen after we leave each other. That are you going to use any of this against me or not? But I can imagine, Lynn, you were hoping, hoping, and hoping that I do. And it's a natural tendency. I want friends whom I, I want people. I, I want to be able to surround myself with those I believe I can trust, with whom those with whom I can have a very kindred experience, knowing that you won't use any of this against me. We're going to work together. And it's interesting, Lynn, and I've heard it just from my experience too many times. Inside the church, I had to be very, very, very careful who I said a word to about this because I don't know who's going to use it against me. I've heard this seeming hundreds of times. I've got a real burden on my heart, but I've got to be real careful who I share this with. I'm sensing, Lynn, that's exactly what you were experiencing. Exactly. And I, it's not that, uh, you know, we just went out and just announced it to everybody. But uh, Marissa, is uh, she, her, she looks very different than our other three. So she's, she has brown hair. She has brown eyes. All of my kids, other kids, they have blonde hair, blue eyes. It didn't take a rocket science to figure out. And people are curious. And they would ask you questions and people at church and they would ask me questions well, and I would just tell them that's, that's when I would then share that. You could just see right away the, they just wanted to get away from you. They just didn't want to be around you. You know, you've, you always felt that it's interesting, but I did not feel that way with non-Christian people. They embraced it and they would even say, wow, I think that's great that you and your husband are you know, moving forward. This is awesome. What a great, and I mean, they, they love the story. They really did. I did not get that from a Christian standpoint. And that's where I longed. I longed to have good, meaningful Christian friends that I could fellowship with. And I just couldn't find that. When you would have odds or you would have discussions, they did use it. They did go. They did gossip about it. That did happen. Lynn, I want to ask you, David was so willing to support you and help you raise Marissa, mm -hmm. a beautiful, beautiful lady. Thank you. The trust in David, that had to grow. 
that he meant it. So explain how you went through seeing the Christians go against you, but not your own husband. That's that's interesting too. That did take time. That's, uh, so when David and I split, one of the things that when we decided to get back together, he, he actually approached me with the idea of getting back together. And he said that he had realized some of the things that I had, that had been saying. We were growing apart. He just, if military is, I don't know. It, it can be very, very hard on families. I loved it. I loved the military. I loved being a part of it. I, I enjoyed our, you know, our lives moving around. But it, it can be difficult in ways that he was gone a lot. And he kind of became a militant person himself. I, <laughs> the military has a way of doing that sometimes to people. And sometimes I think he forgot this is his home and not his office or his airplane or, you know, the, I am not in the military. I am only a dependent. And sometimes he forgot that. I think that by when I had left, it gave him time to really think and really look at his life and how he had treated his family and his wife. And those were the things that when he approached me to, to go to counseling and let's try to work this out. Those are the the wonderful things that he acknowledged that I had been saying all this time and saying, you know what, I think you're right. I need to work on this. And I have to say, he did. He worked at it and he worked at it hard. And he meant what he said. And I decided to give him another chance also because I wanted to do it for my children too. And also because God, had I needed to be obedient to him as well. I knew that this relationship I was in was not right. I knew that this was just something that I had gotten into because I was hurt and, you know, and I, and I, and I understood that. And so when he brought the opportunity of us to try to go to counseling to do something different, I jumped on it. I did not know I was pregnant, though, at the time when we decided to get back together. I had absolutely no idea. That was completely, that just completely floored us. And I think he really worked at it. He said, look, I'm going to, you know, we're going we're gonna to have this baby together. I'm going to raise this child as my, as my own. And he did. I mean, she, that, she loves her father. He loves her. Oh, my God. All three of our kids. She, she, there is no half-sister at all. She is their sister. She is our daughter. And, and, he, and he, he really meant what he said. And he trusted me entirely. Also, he understood I'm coming back. I'm coming back. So, you know, for this to work, he has to trust me. Or it, it wasn't going to work. There was no way it was going to work. I'm making a decision too. And, 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 and that's, and he did. And he, and, and he really, really stood behind me every step of the way. And as I saw how he treated her, it just made you love him more because you realized, wow, what, this is a godly man because there is no way anybody can do what he is doing without mm -hmm. having the Lord in his life. And that was great to watch. And he grew, he, he grew himself. We both grew so much from, from this. That's, that's another thing. It's, it's amazing. Only God can take something that's so sinful and can be so damaging, bring it good into your life. She made us stronger. She made our marriage better. She did everything perfect i mean really he just really it was it's just it's been a, it's been amazing watching god work in in all of this when when you trust him and you you know you trust him and you see what he's capable of doing are you experiencing a hurt or possibly a betrayal you feel is just not possible to overcome you may feel so deeply hurt that you think there's just no reconciliation that's possible through this. I've been violated such that nothing good can come up of this. As you listen to Lynn, you're listening to nearly 25 years of hurts, things that she has had to work through to gather the courage to get to this point to explain. I want to tell you, based on God's word, there is nothing you may be experiencing 
that is too difficult to overcome that with the Lord's help, with his guidance, and I do believe it is appropriate to have the circle of friends that share your same values and will uplift you to help you build your self-esteem, your courage, your confidence. I do believe that with the help of the Lord first and others who are surrendered to the Lord in his word, you can overcome whatever deep hurt, betrayals you may be feeling. There is nothing that is too difficult to overcome. With the Lord's help, he will take you through it. We together can help you overcome. I'm intrigued with the topic of reconciliation. You and Dave seem to model that. This could have been a time when this is so such a deep hurt that there's no recovery, but rather you and Dave seem to go into some sort of aspect of critical thinking that, okay, I, Dave, am a part of this. I, Lynn, am a part of this. Let's talk about what it was that caused the separation and let's work this together. That's what I'm hearing. It was this was the reconciliation part. Right. As I'm hearing this story, it's a, this is a wow story of reconciliation that I'm sure there's some listeners who would say, boy, you do this to me and there is no return. We're, we're done. But rather you and Dave said, no, let's work this together. Dave acknowledged his part of this. You acknowledge your part of this. You came together and it sounds like to your huge credit, Marissa could have come about in an environment to where we resent each other. Marissa grows up in that kind of environment but everything turned out as good as it could be in the context of we accept, we've reconciled, we're going to grow through this together. And I think, oh my gosh, Lynn, this is what could have been a devastating story. This is now a story of reconciliation, a, re a story of hope. There can be some of the deepest, deepest imaginable hurts in a marriage you can overcome this if you make the choice to. And that's what I hear you and Dave did. You made the choice that let's come together. Let's talk about this. This is what I perceive things to be. Dave said, okay, I accept what you're saying. And you've come together. And I know you too. Marty and I know you too as being a model. Gosh, man, this is just a, a huge, huge, huge story of overcoming and reconciliation. Thank you for that, Lynn. But yeah. I'm sure this has been a journey. It didn't come about easy. It's may have taken years to, and this still may be a work in progress. Can you tell us how did the reconciliation come about? Did, did was it Dave who said, "Hey, let's sit down and I'll tell you what my part is"? And how did how did this reconciliation even come about? Because that that seems to be just, just a a huge story, the start of something really good. That is exactly how it happened. I was not as ready, but I also, this relationship I was in was dead end. It was doomed from the very beginning because it wasn't, I wasn't even divorced yet. I'd only just filed. So I had no business getting into another relationship with anyone when I haven't even finished, you know, the relationship that I, I was I was in. And it, it was about a year, it was a year later, we were get, actually a divorce was was about final. It was coming down to the days of it being final. I had gotten a, a call from my attorney, and he said, "You aren't going to believe this, but we didn't have you sign one of the forms." And he goes, "So, and because this was in Oklahoma, I had to go before a judge. You have to to get a divorce in Oklahoma. You have to go before a judge. You have to. You can't do everything." over you have to stand for the judge and they grant it to you and so I was just days away from doing that and he said and I wasn't living in Oklahoma at the time so he said you're gonna have to come back you're gonna have to come back to Oklahoma and you're gonna have to sign this and then it might be a couple months from there and I went you've got to be kidding me <laughs> so I, let, I had called David I had let him know and just like that he said, you know, I've really been thinking about this. I was going to call you. Are you sure you really want to go through with this? And up to that point, I really thought, yes, I wanted to go through with that. I don't know what the words were that hit me, 
but they just hit me at that moment. And I said, I don't know if I want to go through with this. I couldn't believe that was coming out of my mouth. And he goes, I think it's worth a try. You know, let's, let's do something different. I had asked him to go to marriage counseling before, and he didn't want any part of it. This time there was a tone, different tone. He was willing to do things. He was willing to go. And I thought I owed that at least to my children and to myself and to him. So I agreed. And that's really as simple. It's as simple as that. And then we moved forward from there. Lynn, let's bring this in for a landing this part. But I'm uh, your reconciliation. You were maybe just a few hours away from a finalizing a divorce. Correct. But yet, it would appear, and I don't want to speak inappropriately for God, he intervened. Yes. No, that, that is another one of those... Jesus moments in my life. Just when I called him, I had nothing but just to let him know this is what's going on. And when he spoke to me and said, are you sure this is what you want? Something came over me. Absolutely, it was that. That is, that is definitely a turning point. And I know exactly it was Jesus. Absolutely, without a doubt. And here we are today. Lynn, can we pick up in the next episode how God can intervene even in what seems to be a terrible situation and he can change a person's heart even when things seem to be at the depth of depravity and the darkest valley, something like that. God can intervene and totally change a situation. I think our listeners, I know Marty and I, are intrigued. We want to learn more about that. How can God intervene in a situation like that and change a heart so radically? You you and Dave have such a positive story about this that I think our listeners need to know just how all this came about. Would you agree to another episode? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Lynn. I'd be honored. Yes. You've got a great, great story of reconciliation and moving forward in today and Our churches need to learn from this. Stuff happens, but let's work together and we can make good out of something that some people would say, this is so bad, nothing good can come of it. (laughs) Exactly. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lynn. You're welcome. Thank you. What you just listened to was nearly 25 years of compiling different hurts, emotions Lynn has experienced as she recounts those parts of her life, decisions she has made, she is recounting some of those things that she wishes she had not experienced, but yet she did. And she had hoped that she would be able to work through with the circle of friends a lot of the hurts that she experienced, but she felt betrayed in some instances those in the church with whom she was associated sometimes jilted her sometimes betrayed her but using her words by talking against her gossiping and the like she had to work through a lot of these emotions it has taken her several decades to get to this point of having the courage to explain the various emotions she experienced and decisions for which she is accountable and working through the various situations she has been through. She wants to pass forward her life's learning and to tell you based on what she has experienced, what she is learning through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it is possible to overcome any hurts of the past. I want to be quick to say we do not advocate a person staying with another person who is physically abusing you. We do believe that even those hurts of physical abuse can be overcome. Even the deep emotional abuses can be overcome. It may be appropriate to have a period of temporary separation, the purpose of which is to regain a perspective on life such that you too can have the opportunity to reconcile and get back together. 
Dave and Lynn have a great story of reconciliation. They have each experienced various aspects of life. They will each tell you they have allowed the Lord to transform each of them in what used to be in the past no longer is. They are working through all the hurts and the differences of the past. Those things that had been operative in their life in the past no longer are. As many of us would say, the Lord has a work in progress with us. We are a construction zone that the Lord is working in and through us. I feel a great point of admiration, Marty and I together. We thank Lynn for being able to get to the point of passing forward her story, the lessons she has learned, the hurts she has experienced. We're not here to focus on the past, any aspect of that, but rather just recount enough of the past to allow the listener to know what she and Dave have experienced. But the main story is they chose to reconcile. They got together. They said, we can, with the Lord's help, with us surrendering ourselves totally to the Lord, with us focusing on God, we will grow closer together. Marty and I do just that. If you can picture a triangle with God at the top and each of us at the respective legs, as we focus on God, we will get closer together. We will grow closer to each other because we're focused on a common goal. That is what Lynn and Dave have done. They have focused on God. They have chosen to reconcile. There is no hurt that is too deep that reconciliation is not possible. Dave and Lynn are the consummate testimony that any hurt of the past can be overcome. You can live a new life as Christ works in us. He gives us a new life, a new heart, a new story, a new testimony. In spite of whatever has been the past, we can overcome and we can have a great testimony of using the past and how we overcame to pass forward and have a great testimony to give hope to those who are listening, to give hope to those who are within our circle of influence. I have a great gratitude in my heart for both Dave and Lynn, Marty and I together, and we want to pass forward these life lessons that can be learned. We want for you to experience the total fulfillment Marty, I, Dave, and Lynn have in knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We're not here to tell you that to make that decision, everything in the past will be done, forgotten about, and everything is a magic, a life turn and transformation, but rather it is the start of a new journey. That journey is likely going to take some period of time, but you know you're on a better path. You're working toward a better future, and we know the best is yet to come when we put our full trust and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the opportunity to share Christ with you. Please contact us at ron at thecooperculture.com or marty, M-A-R-T-Y, at thecooperculture.com. We merely want to share Christ and the fulfillment we have with him, with you, to give you that opportunity to know the total fulfillment we have in knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Not a sermon, just a thought. We just merely want to share with you. We look forward to sharing and growing with you. Come join us.